Welcome back to another update from me, Aramis, a newly minted full-time indie game developer. And in the last update, which was after week one, I talked about how the first week was kind of a bummer and didn't meet my expectations. Well, this week was completely the opposite. I hit the ground running and it felt good. It feels good to be back. I have a lot of energy inside of me and I'm really, really excited to be working on my new game, this 2D mining game, which I have not named yet. So if you have a name and an idea, come join me over on the Twitch stream. I'm actually recording this right before I'm about to go live. But I had a question in the previous devlog, which I thought was a really good topic for today. And that's talking about the funding model and kind of how I'm going to be approaching this limited time that I currently have of being a full-time indie developer. Because my, my, my big goal here is I want to make the decision for when and if I get a job again to be based off of when I want to do that. I don't want it to be once my money runs out. I've been ruthlessly saving over the last 15, 16 months of having a full-time job to get my funding put together. So I'm self-funding myself, you could say. And right now I have 15 months of funding, which puts me about May 2025, which is a lot of time, but it's gonna go by really quickly. I also have a backup set of money for if shit hits the fan, say I need to repair my house, say one of these little cute little cats up here needs to go get a surgery. I have money put aside for emergency cases and that if I don't need to use that could theoretically give me an extra three months of kind of a backup plan toward the end, which could also help kind of bridge that gap between indie dev and getting a full-time job again, if that's the case. With that 15 months, how do I actually plan on delivering a game in that time frame. Right now, there's gonna be about four different big chunks of work I'm trying to do. We're currently in the prototyping phase. Right now, if you've joined me over on Twitch, either kind of Tuesday through Friday, I'm doing a bonus Saturday stream today because I'm just having that much fun over on the live streams. I'm working toward what I'm calling the minimal viable product, which is just a very, 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 very rough and dirty version of something that I can put in the hands of you so you can play it you can give me feedback you can tell me how the player controller feels it's really just a very much something that you can play a general game loop and i can start getting feedback on some of these like really kind of fundamental levels of the game and then we can start building on top of that but it's, it's really going to be about a month and a half of kind of prototyping and just iterating on that really the MVP to make sure that the foundation is strong and well. Part of the prototyping phase is also dreaming about what the full game can be. And that's a lot of that's gonna be figuring out what goes into the demo, which is gonna be a big chunk of the next seven months, is gonna be working on a really, really good demo that leaves a really good taste in the player's mouth for what a full game could be. With the big goal, of getting it completely polished and ready to be for the October Next Fest. So once the demo is ready to go, somewhere in the middle of that, there's gonna be decisions being made of what is part of the demo and what is part of early access. A lot of stuff will be kind of interchanged between the two pieces and it's gonna be very fluid development versus what day are we doing demo refinement? What day are we doing early access refinement? You'll see I also have this green line here. This green line is gonna be the full release scope. So I imagine as I'm doing early access builds, I'm gonna be making decisions that say, that's a cool system we're building, but let's move that into the early act, the, the full release scope of the game. That's not going to be core to early access. And I think that's where having something like the next fest be this goal of something I want to do really helps me personally define what is worth the time of development and what can wait until later. That could realistically become the February next fest. There's three next fests a year. One happens in February, one happens in June, one happens in October. Typically the deadline for joining those is about five months beforehand. Once the next fest rolls around, you need to have a demo ready, which is why a lot of these next seven months between now and October is going to be focused on demo, 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 making sure that that first hour of gameplay is as polished as possible and then early access will be building on top of the success of the demo and the full release building on top of the success of the early access what else am i going to do with these early access this last part why is this part here gapped like this well with this idea for my 2d mining game i'm pulling inspiration from the arpg genre that is your diablos that is your last epoch that is your path of exiles because i'm pulling some inspiration from those games those games i love to play those games I poured hundreds and hundreds of hours into over the last couple of years, I know that after the early access release, after I see 
the taste that people have for the game? Is it something that people are really excited about? Is early access selling more than I thought it would? Are people on YouTube playing it and having a good time? Are people sending me ideas for things that they think I could do better? All of these are gonna signal to me how far out the full access release should be. I can completely see this being an idea I work on for years and years to come, which is so cool. I could also see it being an idea that I release into early access and say I have, say my goal is to have five big bosses, five big baddies that you go and kill at the end game. I could see early access being two or three of those bosses. And then when we get to the full access release, say it sells as well as Chess Survivor sell, sold, which was awesome. Chess Survivor says sold way more than I thought it would, which still blows me away. If it sells as well as Chess Survivors, I'll probably then cut the scope and say, you know, I'm going to work on the full release for three or four months, get those other few bosses added in, and then I'll do the full release maybe March of next year. But if it's doing really well, that could be years. I could be working on this game for the next five, six, seven years, and it could be something that I do more like a satisfactory where they're early access, they're doing these like release one, release two, release three, these big chunky updates that are almost transforming some of the, the end game of satisfactory. As you can see by me talking here, I'm really excited. This has been a really, really amazing week of my life, and I feel the energy of indie development. I feel the passion of making compelling content for you here on YouTube. I'm so excited to be back live over on Twitch. I will be live right after I post this for a couple hours, hanging out, working on some enemy pathfinding. So if you'd like to join me, I'd love to see you over there hanging out in Twitch chat. Until next time, I've been Aramis. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.